welcome back to Opal and Mint. I am Ashley and today I have another art haul. Today is going to be a Jerry's Artorama haul and I have a handful of things here. Um, it's not a ton, but it is fun stuff. A uh, paint brand that I haven't tried yet, a couple of new Daniel Smith paints, some brushes and some paper. So let's just see what I got. And of course, we're gonna be swatching these paints as well. So I'm gonna save the new palette for last. Let me show you the two Daniel Smith paints I got first. Hold on. All right, so I got two new colors from Daniel Smith and um, yes, I have enough colors from Daniel Smith, but I like trying out more to see if I like a certain color better than others. Um, my palette seems to be ever evolving. I recently took one color out and put in Rose Matter. Really am liking that one a lot. So. I've got these two new colors and I have a feeling these are both gonna end up in my palette. One of them is Hooker's Green and I've actually never tried a Hooker's Green in any brand. So I'm excited to see what I think of this. So I'm very excited to swatch that. And the other one is Quinacridone Deep Gold. And I have Quinacridone Gold in my palette and I really enjoy that one. So I'm curious to see what I think of this one in comparison. So. Those are the two Daniel Smiths that I got. Let me show you the brushes. I got three different Princeton brushes. Um, I've had my eye on these for a while. I'm gonna start with this one because it's so pretty. I, I've honestly wanted this one just because of the handle, and I know that's silly, but I like it, and it's pretty, and it'll stand out from the rest of my brushes. Um, I enjoy brushes that I like, identify quickly because of the handle. Um, it makes it easy for me to find, you know, my favorites. It's like my black silver velvet, velvet one I really enjoy. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to find. The little ring helps a little bit, but having a bright color, I very much enjoy. Anyways, this is a square wash, one quarter inch, and I honestly haven't used this size and shape of brush really, so I'm curious to see what I end up using this for while painting, so. The other two are from the Princeton Neptune line. I think this is technically Princeton Neptune also. Yes, they're all Princeton Neptune brushes. Uh, the first one is a number six round. Um, just a normal, usual size that I go to and use a lot. So um, I wanted to try out the Princeton Neptune. And then the last one is a quarter inch dagger. So again, same size quarter inch, but this one is a dagger brush and I've actually been really enjoying using a dagger brush in a lot of my florals. So got those three brushes. I'm excited to play with those. But next, I got some some more watercolor paper from Jerry's Artorama. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the, their brand or they only sell this. This is the only place you can buy it. I'm not really 100% positive, but I think it's like their in-house brand. But it's New York Central watercolor paper. So I got um, this uh, four by 10 size in the 300 pound instead of 140 pound. Uh, I've been testing out some thicker papers. Uh, there's no need, there's not any really any reason you need more than 140 pound, but I've been trying out the heavier duty paper heavier duty papers. Um, and I wanted to try out the New York Centrals because I have actually been using a lot of their 100% cotton paper and it's really good. Um, so I also got, this is an eight by eight, which I actually really enjoy this size. I think it's a nice, decent size and I really like the square. So this is the 140 pound, 100% cotton watercolor paper. And then one more paper, just another size of the 140 pound and it's, a big one. This is the 12 by 16 and I really have been enjoying painting larger things and I have a lot of Fabriano paper that's like huge that I've been using but I have this as well so I'm excited. Um, I think we'll swatch on... No, I'm gonna swatch on the 140 pound. I will, well, no, we'll swatch on the 300 pound. We'll swatch with flowers. That way I'm not just using that piece of paper for swatches. We're gonna, we're gonna do some flower swatches today. Okay, and here is the main event of this video. I have not tried anything from, 
I have not tried anything from this brand and I've been dying to. Um, there's just so many brands, you know, it's hard to get to them all. But this is Snellier. And forgive me if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Um, but this is a, I don't remember how many pans this is. Hold on. It's an 18 pan. So there are 18 pans in here. Um, there is some room to grow as well. So I think this is a holds 24 if it's like my other one that I have this size. But anyways, we're going to go through and swatch these colors and just get my first initial reaction of this brand in general. Uh, whoop, whoop. Well, there's my first reaction. The paint fell out of the pan on three of them. I don't know which one goes with which. Hold on, let me fix this real quick. Okay, so don't tilt this because the paints come out separate from the pans. Um, I'm sure as I start using these, those will like get stuck in there a little bit better, but yeah, those just fall right out. So, all right. So those are the few things that I picked up recently from Jerry's Artorama. And let's go ahead and turn the camera around and start swatching some beautiful watercolors. So it is a watercolor block, which means if you aren't familiar, it means it's glued on all sides. It has a little spot where you can stick something in to open it. Let's see here. Okay, so I'm gonna start by putting the Daniel Smith paints in these pans and we'll swatch these first. And I think, oh, oh, that just, yep. I think that we'll probably use all the brushes too while swatching. All right, so that is the quinacridone and this is the hooker screen. I would love to know um, what your favorite green is. If you have like a go-to, um, cause I know a lot of people do use hooker's green. I've just never, never used it. Um, so I'm curious to see what I think. And I think I want to start with the Princeton Neptune square wash quarter inch. And I'm going to start with hooker's green cause I am very curious. So for these swatches, I'm just going to, um, paint little flowers. And I'll have some darker areas and some lighter areas so we can see the different. Um, values you can get out of this. All right, so there's hooker's green. That's beautiful. I wonder if that's a granulating color. I'll put on the screen um, the information for it, the pigment numbers and all that stuff. So let's see what the quinacridone deep gold looks like. Interesting. I like this brush though. I don't know why I said though, like I didn't like this color. This color's fine. I could definitely see this being useful. I just, um, I like quinacridone gold because you can get it really light and make it look very, you know, yellow, or you can use it more mass tone. Um, so curious to see how I end up using this one while painting, but beautiful. Okay. So there are the two Daniel Smith ones. I'm going to set those aside and we're going to switch brushes too, so we can try those out. But let's go into the Snellier ones and... Does this come out? There we go. That way I can hopefully read these names. All right, first up is Lemon Yellow. So let's take the round brush and let's swatch out Lemon Yellow. That is definitely Lemon Yellow. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. All right, so the next color is French Vermilion. And this looks like an orangish red. 
very, very warm. Beautiful. Um, these seem to have some good vibrancy and opacity, but they are um, going down to a nice wash. Okay, let's see here. Alizarin Crimson is next. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. That one's really pretty. That one looks like it's granulating. This is a pretty textured paper. So, um, yeah, some of these, until they're dry, I don't really know if they're granulating, but they, they look like it because the paper is so textured. All right, the next one is Carmine. I'm assuming that these two didn't get reversed when they fell out of the pans. <laughs> Hopefully. Although, no, okay. If I, if I was um, looking at these, I would have said that was Carmine and this is Alizarin. But according to the swatches on this thing, this looks to be correct. So hopefully I don't have those um, switched up and backwards for all of eternity now. <laughs> um, all right, next up is Dioxazine Purple. And I have actually never had a Dioxazine Purple as well. Um, it's another color that I think is a staple in some people's palette. I know Emma Lefebvre, um, she uses dioxazine purple quite a bit. So I just haven't ever had one. Oh, this one I'm excited about. This is Ultramarine Deep. And I didn't used to like Ultramarine. I thought it was too blue. <laughs> too bright, vibrant, kiddish blue. Um, but it is a wonderful mixing color and it, and it is generally a granulating color. And I have really grown to love ultramarine and French ultramarine. Very, very pretty. All right. Next up is uh, I don't know how to say this one. Thalocyanine blue. We're going to say that's, that's correct. Okay. <laughs> that's pretty. Next up is forest green. Ooh, that's gorgeous. That is a pretty green. I like, I like a lot. Yeah, that's pretty. See how deep we can get this. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and switch brushes. Um, I am loving the way this feels. It's a very soft, flexible brush. All right, so I'm going on to the dagger. So the um, flowers might look a little different now, we'll see. Uh, the next color is Thalo Green Light. And this looks like a very spring kind of green. Whew. Yeah, this dagger is very, very floppy, but um, that will be really, really good for some nice loose watercolor. Um, it's a very, very vibrant green. Pretty. All right, next up is Burnt Sienna. I'm gonna put you over here in a corner. That's pretty. And that is Burnt Sienna. So, um, I mean, there's only so much I can tell about these, this brand of watercolors just from these initial swatches. Um, next one is, next one is Payne's Gray. Um, but so far I don't have any complaints. They are re uh, reactivating very easily, which I personally 
uh, want in a paint because I don't spray my paints down. Um, I think I want to switch back to the other brush. <laughs> I don't want to fight that. Uh, just not for what I'm, not the right brush for the job at the moment. Um, but they seem to be performing fantastically. I haven't had any, I uh, haven't done any color blending and bleeding yet, but we'll see. All right. This next one is warm Sienna. This is pretty. I like this brown because it's a little bit warm, but um, not too warm. Pretty. All right, a few more to go. Next we have Naples Yellow Deep, and I've actually also never had a Naples, so lots of first colors for me in this palette. Well, that's pretty. Oh, I like that yellow. It's a little bit more muted. Beautiful. Okay, next up is bright red. <laughs> so I'm assuming this is similar to like a permanent red. Let's put you over here. Oop, there we go. We got some colors going into each other right there. All right, next up is Venetian red. Yeah, lots of first for me in this palette. This um, just looks like a brick red brown. All right, and then we have, oh, this is different. Sinner, Sinnerous, Sinnerous Blue. Uh, that's a new one for me. I, I don't know how to say that. Uh, but oh, how's to say? Let's see what this looks like. That is beautiful. That would be a really pretty sky. Some white fluffy clouds. I like that. Okay. All right, two more to go. We have raw umber, which we'll put right here. This is a really good collection of colors. Could do lots of mixing with this. Got some convenience colors. You've got, I'm not really sure where I was going with this uh, flower over here. It kind of just turned into a blob, but that's okay. Oh, I could see a really pretty sunflower with those two. I like painting sunflowers. Okay, the last one in this palette is Ivory Black. So let's see what this one looks like beautiful all right so there are the sommelier with two daniel smiths thrown in there um i love the brushes i'm excited about those and i actually i i don't really use square brushes that much but i'm excited for that one because it's small and it's so flexible um, I think this is gonna be a really, really fun brush. So before I close this out, I do want to, um, have some of these colors just blend into each other. I just want to play with them just a little bit more. Um, but I do want to know if you have tried this brand of paint, uh, I want to know what your thoughts are. Um, for reference, I use Daniel Smith primarily. I have lots of other paints at this point. Um, I've been <laughs> building up quite a paint collection, but oh, these are pretty. Yeah, I really enjoy that they re-wet nice and easily. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe these are honey-based. Um, so, oh. These are beautiful. Yeah. And I will have put the um, pigment information and stuff on the screen as I was swatching those. So hopefully that helps you out. If you are a pigment nerd, not necessarily my thing, but 
I know that there are some people that enjoy that. So, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have a favorite paint from this brand, I would also like to know that if there's something else that I need to try. Um, if they have any good granulating paints, please let me know because I love some granulating paints. But I think that is going to wrap it up for this one. If you did enjoy this, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you want to see our future videos, hit that subscribe button down below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh no, I just put my hand in the paint. Oh. It's the microphone. Hey guys. Hey now, hey now.